Oh, it's awesome to know that um, no matter what, right, no matter what we serve, he, if he's the way maker, that means that he makes the way, right? And he's bigger than anything he has made. So as big as our world is, as big as our, the, the, the immensity of our world, as big as it is when you try to comprehend the size of our world and everything that entails the movements, the activities of our world, he's bigger still. And that same God, that, that is who he is, uh, is on our side. Imagine that we've invited him to be a part of our lives. He's on our side. He's not on the outside. He's not in the outside looking in. He's on our side. Amen? And so it is so utterly important that we believe that he's here with us this morning. Can someone say amen to that? Utterly important. He's on our side, and he's here with us this morning. Before we go on, I wanted to invite uh, Brother Paul, because he had something he needed to present today. <clears throat> um, let's see. Dave and Ray, come on up. So at our church here, we have a, discip a discipleship program, and many of you have not heard about it, but uh, um, the, uh, the elders have decided, and the pastor, to, um, once somebody becomes a new believer, a Christian, uh, um, they need to be discipled. And we have a booklet that uh, was given to me last year, and I tried it. I said, okay, I, I, I'm going to try this, because I've been a Christian um, about 40-some years, and I really don't know how to disciple people well because I was not trained, because I didn't go to Bible school, I didn't go to the theological seminary. Uh, I'm just a plain old guy. And he gave me this book, and there's questions and answers, so I read the questions and answered them, and uh, stuff falling out. And there's, there's uh, seven steps here that uh, we, once we meet with men or women, um, there's the assurance of salvation, baptism, I also throw in communion, church attendance, prayer, Bible study, tithing and giving, and disciple making. So there's, there's seven steps that we think is very uh, important in a new Christian's life to 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 be grounded, to figure out, okay, what does all this mean? What, what kind of decision did I make? And it, it is an awesome experience. I've had, uh, I, I've been, I've discipled three different men so far. And um, I'll tell you what, I have grown through this, this little booklet um, that, that, that uh, depends on the scriptures, of course, and I've seen other people grown. And if you're interested in becoming a, or learning how to disciple one another, some of you have other means of discipling others, um, and that's great. But if you're not sure and you want to learn more about this, talk to the pastor or I, because it's a simple tool to help you. Um, maybe you're a more mature Christian, and you can say, I need to do that. Uh, you can do that with your spouse first. You can do that with the, your son or daughter or something like that. So you get more familiar with going over the questions and answering. And then together you both learn with one another. It's an awesome tool. So I, and Dave and Ray, they have gone through the book. Um, Ray was Sharon Gray and... Dave with me this, this past uh, year, and I want to present them with certificates of completion that Dave and, and Ray, um, thank you for your desire to learn more about the following Jesus Christ as Lord uh, and completion of the seven steps of the uh, Joy Disciples study. May you continue to grow in your walk with him daily. May he show you who whom you can encourage by discipling others. And what an awesome thing. And I just want to present them with this, um, with this certificate of completion. And Dave, do you want to say a couple words? If you'd like. It's okay. Um, yeah, that's a 
very good course, and um, it's let me grow stronger with the Lord. Amen. Ray? <laughs> You're good? Okay. Same worse than me, but... <laughs> Last year, these two wouldn't even come up front, okay? And here they are. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Amen. And we have, uh, um, pastor said, hey, you forgot something. I said, what did I forget? I'm getting forgetful. Oh, we have the playground fun going on here. So... That's a cue, Matt. Okay. <laughs> um, as you know, we are raising money towards our uh, playground that we want to display out uh, beside our parking lot for the community and also an outreach. So keep praying about this. And you, as the Lord provides giving and above and beyond um, uh, your, your tithe, to help this uh, fund grow. We are getting very close to the goal. Uh, last week it was down to five, and I heard uh, it's uh, above 7,000. Is that correct, Amy? Okay, our treasurer. And uh, so thank you for giving. And um, I, I put my check in the offering plate back there, and I accidentally, I, this was not on purpose, but I saw some checks for the playground, and they were a nice amount. So you have to come next week to see how this uh, thermometer is going to go up. So thank you for giving for the Lord. Thank you for praying. And we'll continue to try to meet this goal by August so we can get this in. The pastor said, I don't think we're going to do it. And I said, ye of little faith, I think we can do it. So um, thank you for praying and thank you for giving to the Lord. It's good to know what he was thinking. Repent of that, brother. Anyway, God is good. Uh, yeah, continue to pray for that. Uh, the process of discipleship, thank you, uh, Brother Paul. And I know Jocelyn's not here. She's gone through the program as well. Uh, it's just a, an encouragement to be able to come alongside a young brother or sister in Christ. By the way, uh, discipleship, the process of it continues. You know, there's never a time where we say, like Paul the Apostle said, I've not already attained, but I press on toward the goal. And so discipleship is a constant thing, but it's taking someone under your wings where, the, you, where you can not just teach them how to be a disciple, but also show them how to be a disciple by how you live and how you conduct yourself. So spending time with someone that you take under your wings. And you do not need to be a brand new Christian to go to a discipleship class. It's good to just go back to the foundational, the, the basics of Christianity in your walk with God and start from there and then work with others so you don't have to be you know you can be 30 years in the lord and still say hey you know what i want to go through those foundational things again it's been a long time and i know that god's called us to disciple others that by the way is a commandment right and it's part of our theme memory verse for the year so i uh, wanted to encourage you with that um as far as the two things i wanted to say one uh the ladies will be the ladies are going to make food for us soon fathers you get that the ladies are going to cook for us isn't that awesome And uh, just because of that, let me just say this, you know, not that we're comparing or, you know, anything like they're competing, but um, I just want to remind the ladies that we have Dick Mapes on our side when we cook food for you guys, all right? This is lunch. All right, so, uh, <clears throat> All right, so uh, you know today's Communion Sunday. Communion Sunday, we usually have an abbreviated message, and we allow room for testimonies at the end. I don't know if we'll have room for that today, but the clock will tell us otherwise. Uh, but today we are fasting and praying. I do want to say that since we started, we, we've been fasting and praying the leadership, the board members, for several years now. But we started this two years ago now. Um, I think it was at the start of last year, and I want to say that, and maybe the year before that, I don't remember exactly. But since we started, I've seen... Uh, an upgrade in our church the lord is doing some more things and i'm not blaming i'm not giving all the credit to fasting and prayer but that is a part 
that is an integral part of a habit or a commitment that we can make that's going to, in, you know, inspire the Spirit of God to work more so in our church because there is power in fasting and there is power in prayer. Amen? <coughs> so today, uh, some of the things that some of us are fasting and pray for up on the screen, notice first of all, uh, a steadfast and cultivated heart that is totally sensitive and open to the will of God. That has a whole lot to do with how we started this year. Remember something more in 24? So that's what we're praying for, that cultivated heart, a heart in which is allowing God to work in it, so totally sensitive and open to the will of God. Secondly, a united spiritual prompting, provision, and passion for our present and future children's playground. Let me just say that the children's playground is, is, is for our children. We love our kids. I love to see them running around. Sometimes I, I make a mistake and start running with them, and then I can see their parents, and I know I'm the one who said we shouldn't be doing this, and here I am doing it. So I'm still in, uh, I might be playing in that playground as well. But anyway, uh, it's not just for our children. It is for our children, but it's also for the children who are drive, riding up and down the streets with their parents uh, up and down the streets that they can see that we care enough for your children and we care enough for them to to invest in such a beautiful place like this so that they can come and have some fun. And so it, it, it's all about outreach. It's all about reaching the communities for Jesus Christ. Amen? So be, please be praying about that, what, what God would have you to make there, and above all, prayer. Prayer is powerful. Thirdly, for open door opportunities to show and share God to those he brings our way, uh, continue to pray for that. We need to invite people. We need to let people know that amidst all that is going on in our world, all that is going on constantly, if it's not one thing, the next thing, it's things after they being added, uh, that there is, there is hope. And that hope doesn't begin with things getting better. That hope begins with Jesus being invited to have his way in our lives. It's really important that we help people understand that and praying for them and encouraging them and give them, giving them a little card invitation to our church. We'll have some of those next week. And then lastly, a, a, a ministry mindset as we approach the summer months. We get involved in ministry during the summer. We have the car wash ministry coming up. We have some volunteer work at the carnival coming up. We have um, uh, ministry. We have movie night ministries. We have different things that we do like that that we like to do. And so I want to encourage you. There's the yard sale coming up. Uh, these are all opportunities to be a voice for Jesus. So let's, let's be praying about those things. Amen. So what I wanted to do this morning is, as you see them up there, I want us just to take 30 seconds or so and just pray in your spirit for something that is up there. Pray in your spirit for that. Let's bring that before the Lord and know that he's here with us. Amen. Father, the way maker that you are, we thank you that, uh, that you indeed do make ways. There are walls that only you can bring down, smash. Only you can. There are obstacles that you can delete, Father. There are challenges that you can make easier for us as we entrust ourselves to you. And so, Father, we pray. Yes, we pray that I pray for my heart and I pray for our hearts. We pray together, God, for hearts in which the, the soil has been fertilized, hearts that are being cultivated by your grace and by your mercy, God, so that we would, as followers of Jesus, uh, would continually surrender to you our hearts, the deepest areas of our hearts and lives, which you call us to God. And so, Father, we pray for our hearts to be completely, continually, totally cultivated and surrendered unto your keeping, Father. We pray also, Father, for the playground. Thank you, Father, for the slightly over seven thousand dollars we've already received thank you for brother dick mapes who has uh helped out so much with this taking uh the flyer to various business owners that he knows uh, men and women that he's developed a relationship with in order that they in order to be heard they respect him so much that they've provided somewhat uh for this uh, playground so thank you for his work as well we give you the praise i know he does 
And Father, I pray for those that have given, and thank you for them. Thank you for every penny that comes for this playground is going to be provided by you, dear God. And so, Father, for the glory of Jesus in this community, and for the sake of the many little ones, God, who, um, uh, Lord, just they just need good godly principles and good godly examples and good godly people in their lives and churches that love them enough uh, to provide for them things that they can have fun with and enjoy and know that they're loved and embraced. And so, Father, continue to provide as you have up to this point, God, that we would see this playground go up there for the glory of Jesus and that we would see new faces and new families coming to bring their children with an opportunity to hear the message of the gospel and the hope of Jesus. So, Father, we commit that to your keeping in Jesus' name. We pray for the open door opportunities, dear Jesus, as we watch the headlines and the news. Uh, we're continually reminded that we're in trouble and that we need help. Uh, Lord, there's no way we can uh, uh, avoid even thinking of that need of you in our lives and in our world today. And so, Father, uh, help us to be alert, as, as, especially when we're out there around people, whether in Walmart or in the supermarket or walking down the street, God, uh, to, to, to share with those that you open a door for us to share with the hope that we have in Jesus. Our hope is not in our world, dear God. Our hope is in Jesus, who is to govern our world, who wants to guide our world, who wants to be a part of what's going on in our world if we invite him in. And so, Holy Spirit, help us to be ready for those moments that you give us. And, Father, we just pray that as we approach now the warm weather, the summer months, thank you for a church that has men and women that uh, want to be a part of serving. They're here to serve. They're here to, to reach out. They're here to be a voice. They're here to, to be a part of ministry and ministries that are offered for the glory of Jesus and for the benefit of others. And so, Father, we pray that you prepare our hearts for that as well. And we thank you for your grace and love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Again, it is so utterly important that we know this morning. I wish more people were here, but it's the summer months. So um, they asked me when I was interviewed, what will be the, you know, interviewed for a job seven years ago, what will be your day off? They wanted to know what would be my day off. And I said, well, Sunday sounds like a good day, but that didn't go too far. So uh, Sunday is an off day for many people, but um, it's never an off day for the things of God. Amen. Let's believe that God is here this morning. And, um, and so I wanted to invite this morning, we have some graduates this morning. Is Alan around here? Alan. Can someone get Alan for me? Thank you. And then I want to also invite up here uh, Cassandra, if you can come up here and join us. Come on, you can do it. And also want to invite uh, Evan, uh, if he can come up. Brother and sister Evan and Cassandra, thank you both. And we're going to get little Alan here, who is also celebrating a graduation. So, yeah. Um, thank you very much. You're a good wife. Hi, Alan. Yeah, look at his shirt. <laughs> Alan, we want to invite you up with two other people that are graduating. I just wanted, we wanted to say to you that we are so very, very proud of you. You're moving from kindergarten to first grade. You're moving up in the world, right? Good job. We, we, you work very hard, right? You work very hard. You made it happen. You believe that you can do it. I know your mom and dad prayed for you. And today we are celebrating with you your graduation, okay, from kindergarten to first grade. And this is for you on behalf of our church. We love you and we care for you. But don't go anywhere because we're going to pray for you in a moment, right? Sister Cassandra, we have been praying for you. We are so thankful for your family here. We're so thankful that you're part of our church uh, you've worked very, very hard, and uh, there were a lot of sleepless nights and tough nights and getting projects done and meeting goals and all that, but you did it. You made it, and you're graduating out of high school, praise the Lord, and so we want to we wanna commend you for your hard work and your dedication. We love you. We care for you, 
and wanted to give you this as a reminder of the one who helps us make it through. And Brother Evan, I don't know what to say. I just, every time I see you, I remember this little kid when I walked into church. And then one day you just laid off a pass and you grew way over my head here. And you're passing your family here too. So um, I can't, you've made me very proud of you. And I know your parents are fam much more proud of you than I am perhaps. And that's hard to imagine. Uh, you're a hard worker. You're a dedicated man. We've seen you serving the Lord here. We've seen your talents. You're brighter than I can imagine. And I thank God for you. And I know God wants to do some awesome things in your life. As you graduate now and head to college, we want you to know, I want you to know, we want you to know that we'll be praying for you, we'll be rooting for you, we'll believe, we believe in God for you, and we know God's going to do some good things to you. So congratulations to you, my brother. Love you. Let me pray, let me pray for you guys. Give me a little hug. It's okay. Father, I thank you for these uh, three that are graduating. Thank you for... Uh, your word says that through you we can do it, Father. And so thank you for the ability you gave them, the steadfastness, the dedication, the hearts, the desire to accomplish their goals and to get to that next phase, that next level of their lives. So, so I pray for Evan, I pray for Cassandra, and I pray for Alan that you would guide them continually, that you would remind them that you are there with them and that you're able to get them there, Father that you give them wisdom in everything that they do, God. Pray against anxieties and fears or worries or concerns of the what-ifs in the name of Jesus, and that if any of that should come, they'd find uh, the hope in you that they have so that they can get through those challenges, Father. We just thank you and praise you that all accomplishments are accomplished by you and through you, and we give you the praise, and we embrace them. We love them. We care for them. We pray for them, and we entrust them to you as well from here on, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, so with their accomplishments, right, and with what's next for them, as well as for us, I was thinking about it, as well as for us, I want to open up in prayer this morning as we'll entitle this message, and it's up on the screen right now, Achieving Our Goals. Achieving your goals, achieving my goal, achieving our goals. So would you please stand with me and join me in prayer. Achieving your goals. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace and your love and just your faithfulness, God. Thank you for the fact that you are here with us this morning. We worship you. We worship you because of who you are. We worship you because of your faithfulness. We worship you because of your steadfastness in working in our hearts and in our lives, Father. So we praise you and we thank you. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that with this abbreviated message, if that is what it is to be there, God, that you would meet us where we're at, that you would prepare our hearts. You know where every one of us is at right now mentally and spiritually. You know exactly what we're feeling and what we're thinking. You know of the anxieties and the fears and worries or what may you know, Father. And so, Holy Spirit, we invite you to guide, we invite you to direct, we invite you to, to make clear to us the word of admonition or challenge or whatever it might be, dear God, that you have for us this morning. But we praise you uh, for your faithfulness, and we know that because you're here, uh, we have hope, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> So, I, you know, I, 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 I go bike riding twice a week around here, you know, and I have this tendency. I go up, I go across White Street here, uh, Ridge Road, and I go all the way to the other side right before you head into Orangeville, and then I turn back. And I do that three times. It turns out to about two miles. I want to do more, but I'm not going to push it at this point, but I'll get there. Anyway, so, um, and I remember the other day, the first time I went around, I saw them. They, they were right there. It was a bunch of them, you know. And then the second time I went around, I saw them again. And then the third time I went around, I saw them again. And, and what's interesting is that um, they were beautiful. They were, they were black and they were yellow, a bright yellow black. And um, they, were, they were not the Steelers, no. <coughs> I can't believe you're thinking that. 
All right. Let's get back to the word here. All right. So football season is not here yet. Anyway, but back to the message. So, so no, they were caterpillars. They were caterpillars, little tiny caterpillars, and some were small and some were medium, and then some were uh, a little bigger. But let me introduce you to our memory verse for the month of, of June. It's also our springboard text for today. It's found up on the screen in John 14, 27, right? Where uh, Jesus, well, let's read this together because this is our memory verse for June. Can we read that together? Peace I leave with you. Amen. And of course, Jesus is the one saying that. Perhaps some of us have memorized this verse. It is a very, very powerful verse and what Jesus is saying. So I just want to give you a little bit of content to this, this actual verse, a little content, and then bring it home with the applicational aspect of today's message, okay? So a little content here. If you remember, um, Jesus, so Jesus finishes this verse, right? Uh, John 14, 27, he finishes his last sentence is, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Uh, he finishes it the same exact way that he started chapter 14. The very first word says, verse says those same exact things. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Remember that Jesus has just recently given his disciples some disturbing news. In verse 2, he said to them, I'm going to leave you. In other words, he tells them, I'm not going to be with you like this I, as I am very shortly. And he does that several times in the 14th chapter. But even before that, after, the, after washing the disciples' feet, Jesus says to them, he says, one of you will betray me in verse, in verse 21 of chapter 13. He says, one of you will betray me. And then in verse 38, he says, uh, one of you will deny knowing me. So this is some disturbing news to the disciples. This is after he had walked with them for at least three years, teaching them and, and showing them and, 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 you know, living, walking with them, doing ministry with them after that. And even after the fact that he tells them, he declares to them what they declared to him in chapter 13 and verse 13, where they said to him, they called him teacher with a capital T and Lord with a capital L. So disturbing news, and then he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. So he's encouraging them. Jesus says to them, he says, my peace. And when Jesus says my peace, he's using a Hebrew expression for greeting. It's, it's the way that Hebrew people have a tendency, depending on their relationship, to greet one another. He says, my peace. Shalom. And, and then, so... I don't think that Jesus is using this phrase here just as a greeting to them. He seems to be going a bit further. I think that Jesus is more establishing and reestablishing who he is and what they have and can claim because of who he is. So he's confirming and preparing them for what's next. In fact, in verse 19 of chapter 14, the chapter we're looking at today, he says, um, peace be with you. In verse 21, he says, peace be with you. In verse 26, he says, peace be with you. He's the one the angels sang about, if you remember, in Luke chapter 2, right? Where they said, you know, that this one is going to come and he's going to bring peace to all people on whom his favor rests. So the prince of peace of Isaiah chapter 9 is here, and he's helping them and preparing them for what is next. Jesus says to them, peace be with you, encouraging them in spite of the discouraging words that he just recently shared with them. And yes, when he says peace, he is referring to, um, to that peace that, that comes as a result of his redemptive work. That peace that is available to all of us if we know Jesus, and if, even if we don't, we can reach out and know him, that peace that is available to all of us because of we, what he accomplished that first Good Friday when he went to Calvary. The peace of Jesus. He's referring to that. He's referring to a peace that, that this world cannot give you. 
He's referring to a peace that is not a temporary peace. It is not a selfish peace. It is a peace that is different than that. He's talking about a peace that is daily, it's constant, and it's forever. He's talking about a peace that, that will give no room to, no, give no room or no lasting room to, to panic or pressure or worry or fear. He's talking about a total different peace, a peace that the world can't give and a peace that the world cannot take away. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus is talking about. He's just disturbed them by telling them all these things about what was about to happen, but he's inviting them to hold on to his peace. He is indeed the peacemaker. He is indeed the way maker. He is indeed the chain breaker. He is Christ, the Prince of Peace. And so he's encouraging them and, and reminding them of what he wants to do. Church, would you agree with me this morning as Paul said? Where's Paul? Hey, buddy. You're not going to interfere today, right? No, thank you. But Paul said we all have goals, don't we? We all have goals. Everybody has a goal. They're the common everyday goals of things we do and things we need to do. And then they're, they're also goals of things we want to do and things we hope to do dreams and goals that we have, things we want to accomplish in our lives. There are some goals that may not necessarily be healthy goals, goals that might not be wise goals, medical in nature, relational in nature, criminal in nature that can be life-threatening goals. And then there are goals that focus not just on the present, but even more so on the future goals for success, success, goals to make it happen, Great goals to, to, to better ourselves. But church, whether they're wise goals or foolish goals, all goals, all goals, whether wise or foolish, can be life-changing in nature, whether good or bad. Today, very briefly, and I mean briefly, unless the Holy Spirit says otherwise, I want to share with you... Um, um, well, let me say this, that we can indeed accomplish our goals. We can accomplish our goals. We can accomplish healthy goals and, and good goals and, and life-changing goals for the better. We can. But there are three people that we need to be aware of. There are three people that we need to be looking out for in order to accurately accomplish our goals. And I want to briefly share these three people with you. This is not on the screen from here on, so just stay with me, all right? The first one is yourself. This is not just for the graduates. This is also for all of us because we all have goals. Our graduates had a goal, and they accomplished that goal. Praise the Lord for that. We embrace them, and we're proud of them. But they have goals from here on, and so do we. Amen? So goals don't stop from happening. We, we have a goal. We want to accomplish some things we want to accomplish, especially in our walk with God. But nonetheless, we all have goals. Yourself. Be careful with yourself. We need to understand that, that we're not perfect and that sometimes we, we make ill choices, choices that can come back and haunt us. It's just the way we are as humans. So, so we need to guard ourselves. The Bible says, guard your heart, right? It's our memory verse for last month. Guard your heart. Just make sure you make the right choices. I've told you before that we're our biggest enemy, not the world, not the devil, but the flesh is the biggest enemy that we have because, because we can opt to say yes or no to the attacks of the enemy, the enticements of the world. It's up to us. And sometimes we, we, we blame God for something God didn't do or we blame God the devil for something he did do when in reality we should be blaming ourselves for something we didn't do that we should have done or something we did that we should not have done. Paul the apostle was so good at, at, at keeping a close eye on himself. It's a powerful chapter. You read that in chapter Romans chapter 7. Paul, and I'm going to paraphrase but, paraphrase, but he basically says, I know in verse 15 he says, he says, the things that I want to do I can't do, and then the things that I hate, I keep on doing. He says things to this effect. He says, every time I want to do the right thing, I end up doing the wrong thing, and the right thing I wanted to do when I first started, I ended up not, not, not doing. I did what I did not want to do. And then in verse 24, he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Goals are attainable. 
But watch yourself, because we often have a tendency to interfere with what's best for us. Watch yourself. Guard your heart. Keep your focus. Keep your, keep your mindset on what you need to. Secondly, not just yourself, but people. Think about people. In Exodus 23 and verse 2, it says, uh, Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. Watch the people. Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I can preach a message on that verse all along, maybe one day. Bad company corrupts good character. So, yes, you got to watch yourself, but you also watch the people. You have to. You got to watch the people. I remember when my sister lay on her deathbed there in the hospital, and we knew it was coming to an end. I remember looking at her and the thought coming to mind of the many friends that my sister had who she referred to as her ace boon coon. You ever heard that? Okay, I'm, I'm dating myself. But basically, uh, another way of saying back in the day of saying, these were my best friends, my best buddies. That day as she lay in bed, not one of her best buddies was there at her side to ask for forgiveness for encouraging her to take heroin and to destroy her lives. Those friends who encouraged her to put the needle in her veins and who encouraged her to drink the bottle and who encouraged her to forget about what your family says about the people who care for you, who encouraged her to destroy her life, not one was at her bedside to apologize for the evil, evil influence they had in her life. Watch out for the people. There'll be people who care for you, who love you, who encourage you, even within the church, encouraging you on scripture memory and encouraging you on Bible reading and staying close to Jesus, and we need that. Family members who love you and care for you, praying for you, encouraging you, being there for you. Um, and those are people who you want to hold on to. Those are people who you want to follow and listen and receive their advice. But there'll be others who, whether it's because of jealousy or because they don't want you to succeed because they're not succeeding, who will do everything they can to rob you of your vision, your goal, your dream, your desire. And they will not be there with you when you fail. So we need to watch out for ourselves, yes. And we need to also watch out for uh, others, the people. Make sure you're following the right crowd. If they don't have the right focus, the right perspective, they're going to deviate you. Watch out for the people. Let me say one thing about, about uh, healthy goals and unhealthy goals. So a healthy goal is a whole a goal that you have control over. It's a goal that you set for yourself that no one can block. If someone can block that goal, then it's not a healthy goal. A healthy goal is a goal that you have control over. So we want the best for our children, right? And we want the best for our spouses. And we, we, want, we want the best for our family. And we want the best for people. But um, we can't have a goal for them. You know, we could say, you know, uh, my goal is for my, my daughter to be a dynamic Christian when she grows up. My goal is for my husband to be a dynamic man of God. But that is an unhealthy goal because the children or your husband can block that goal and that leads to depression and discouragement it's good to have good desires for our children but to have a goal like that is a goal that as long as they can keep that goal from transpiring in their lives you're going to end up discouraged i remember a church i was in one day a pastor the pastor got up at the start of the new year and he said this year my goal is to increase our church membership to 300 people what a goal to have, a dynamic desire. But the problem with that goal is that the 300 people need to be willing to make that goal a part of their lives to get to church. And if they don't do that, your goal has just fallen to the wayside. They're healthy goals and they're non-healthy goals. A healthy goal is a goal that you can control. We have dynamic desires for our children and for our spouses and for our friends and for our church and for people, dynamic desires. But the goal is something that only you can control. That's the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy goal. 
And then lastly, so yourself, your people, uh, people, and then lastly, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, um, yeah, look out for Jesus. Keep an eye on Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2 says, keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and the perfecter of our faith. He's the one that enables us to get there. Keep your eyes on Jesus, focused on him, looking in his direction, knowing that he's faithful. And we know that Jesus is here referring to, you know, uh, my peace I give you. And he's referring, he's referring to the peace of knowing who I am and the peace of knowing who he is and the peace of knowing where I'm going to be the moment my life stops living here on this earth. That's peace. That's ultimate. That's dynamic peace. Isn't that good to know? That if the, if the heart stops beating, I know where I'm going. That's peace. But he's not just referring to that. Jesus is referring, and contextually speaking, biblically speaking, Jesus is the one that, that uh, has promised to be with us all the time. He said he'd never leave us. He said he's there to be our strength, our shield. It's peace in knowing that no matter what this world throws at me, and by the way, your goals will get challenged, every one of us. No matter what the world throws at us or what the enemy throws at us, we still have Christ on our side. And I think Heather was talking about that briefly here, is that, you know, even if it doesn't go the way we want, it goes the way he wanted and we're trusting in him and leaning on him. That's peace. Peace is not having what we always want, church. Peace is not always getting it as we want. Peace is knowing that as we're having it is how he wants us to have it, so he's there with us to take us through it. Our peace and our consolation comes from knowing that whether we survive or don't survive, or whether we make it or we don't make it, he's going to be with us along the way. And often when we trust him through those trials times is when we get through to the finish line. And so it's leaning on Jesus. Is yeah, look to yourself. Be careful. Watch the people. Be careful. Uh, but don't forget Jesus. He's there with us. He's faithful. It's, 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 it's because he's there with us. See, Jesus calls us to an intimate relationship with him. Do you know that the most important person regarding you in the eyes of God when it comes to him and you is, is him and you? In other words, when you approach God in prayer on a daily basis, at that moment that you are seeking the face of God, the most important person in all the world at that moment is you. Think about that. That's what's on his mind. That's what's on his mind. It's you. He's not thinking about John, Tony, Mary, or Lucy. He's thinking about you right there as you pour out your heart to him. No one can love us like that. Our relationship with God, with God is based on a relationship with God. So think about Jesus. Think about God yourself. God your heart. Stay focused. Stay in tune. Keep the right perspective, the right motive, the right determination. Uh, watch the people. Some come to discourage and to divert you, and some come to encourage you. Those are the ones you want to hold on to. Those are the ones who are encouraging you to do right, to fulfill your dreams, to fulfill your goal. They're, they're pushing you to go forward. And some will stick out your leg, hoping their leg, hoping to knock you down as you walk by. So watch out for the people. So Jesus is, is there. Don't forget also that the devil has a goal for us. He also has a goal for our lives. God says, for I know the plans I have for you. The devil says, oh, yeah, that's what you think. God says, I know how to get you there. And the devil says, that's what you think over my dead body. No, Jesus said over, over his dead body and went to Calvary and made it possible for so watch out for yourself, watch out for the people, and watch out for Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Church, my friends, he, he is our ability to get there. Paul said, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and now there is in store for, them, for me the crown of righteousness. He accomplished his goal. He got to the finish line. Jesus is the one that enables us. Jesus is the one that gives us the motivation. He's the one that that helps us stay focused in church when we do something ultimately for the glory of God it's also for our benefit when we do what we do for his glory and because of him he begins to now he's invited to be an integral part in the motivation aspect in the determination aspect in the strength and focus aspect of that goal that we have and that's why it can happen it's inviting him 
He says in John 15, 5, apart from me, you, you can do nothing. In, John, in, in Philippians 4, 13, it, it's, it says, I can do all things through Christ. I can accomplish my goals through Christ. I can, I can have healthy goals through Christ. I can fulfill my life's dream through Christ. I can get to the finish line through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, empowers me, enables me. He's faithful to his word. That's who he is. And then in Matthew 20, 28, um, Matthew 28, 20, sorry, Matthew 28, 20. He says, and I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He's always with us. There's never a time when he's not with you. Let me finish with this thought. As I, as I, I noticed as I drove the bike around the first time, and, and some of them didn't make it. They were headed somewhere, and some were going faster than others, and, and some didn't make it, but I noticed by the third time that they got so much more further than they were when I first saw them. And here, a thought came to mind. You ready for this? Please don't think bad of me. But as I came the first time, <laughs> I'm, I'm steering, and I wanted to, to run over a few of them. You know, I wanted to, you know, one of this. The thought came to mind. And then a thought followed that. It says, this is how the enemy works. When you and I have a goal to get somewhere, something we want to accomplish in our lives, the enemy will do everything he can to interfere with that goal. And he'll raise up people to get you get in your way. Sometimes your own self, but he'll raise up obstacles in your lives. And as I, I thought, the thought came to me, I said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Second time, they were a little further. The third time, they were even further. I didn't go the fourth time to see where they got. But um, uh, um, just know this. We can get to our destination. We can accomplish our goals. Whatever those goals are, and I pray most of them are heavenward. I pray most of them are to grow in Jesus, are to draw close to God, are to go to school and to honor Christ, are to get a good grade, to do well, to accomplish my goal, to get a good job, whatever it might be, but that at the end of it all, at the center of it all, and at the start of it all, is God has created me to be someone of possibility and to live a positive life, a successful life a goal accomplishing achieving life through jesus we can do that amen let's close in prayer father we are thankful this morning for your grace thank you again for the graduates at our church and and yet father at the same time when we think about it as we think of these few words here thank you for the prince of peace thank you jesus that you came to give us peace, even in conflict and difficulty and challenge and disturbing news, you came to give us peace. And that peace is what enables us to get to where we need to get to. And so, Father, I pray for myself and I pray for this church. I pray for every person seated before me and those hearing online that, Father, we would um, remember that there are goals to be met, there are achievements to be had, there are things to be done for our betterment and for your glory in our lives, and that through you and because of you and by you and as a result of you, we can get there. Thank you for the the goals that we've accomplished, and thank you for the more that we want to for the glory of Jesus. So we praise you for your grace and for your love and your mercy. Thank you that there's so many seated within this congregation right now that can say, God enabled me to do this. He enabled me to accomplish that. He got me to where I'm at right now. And my friends, my sisters and brothers, just know he'll get you to the next point as well. Just make sure he's first. Thank you, Father, for your grace in Jesus' name.